right, I do have the message of the morning, so I'm going to ask you to turn to Isaiah chapter 9 this morning. Isaiah chapter 9. We're going to look very quickly. Uh, This is the last time that the Lord is going to have uh, for me to be able to speak to you before Christmas break. So, you know, I was kind of thinking of what to speak on, what to do, what the scripture to look at, because I love Christmas time. I love Thanksgiving also. I mean, I'm sure you guys are halfway checked out already. I mean, you're ready to go home. You're ready to uh, just hit the road or, or uh, fly or drive and just get home. And uh, it, it's going to be a great week. We're looking forward to, to you having that week. And we look forward to what the Lord is going to do. You know, whenever I get to Thanksgiving, our family has a tradition that we go around the table while we are, um, before we eat, and just say something about how the Lord uh, is working in our lives. And, and, you know, this morning, as we look at this, I don't have a PowerPoint for us this morning, but I want to just submit to you a few things. I think Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 gives us a magnificent picture of a magnificent God. A magnificent picture of a magnificent God. And the reason I say that is because we have four terms that are used in this passage that helps us to understand how beautiful our Savior is. And the question that I have for you today, young people, is a very simple question, is is what is God to you? What attribute would you today say, you know what, God's character and personality has been working in my life this way? What would you say? Let me just read the verse and then and give you a couple of thoughts here. And I actually would just like for you as students to maybe just say a character quality that has been working in your life as of late of who God is to you. Isaiah verse, uh, 9 verse 6 says this, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder... And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. I know some of you probably have a, a um, comma in there. I believe this is one title. Wonderful Counselor, um, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And then you go on to say that of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with the justice from henceforth forever and ever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Can I submit to you today as you think about your God? I know sometimes we try to come into chapel and talk about problems that we're having head on or or idols of the heart or uh, the issue of respect, but I, I would submit to you today that we should take time as Christians to really reflect on how beautiful our God is. Set aside maybe my problems that I have for the day or my issues that I have for the week or my cares that I have that I have to address for the next month and a half and just say, God, you are this to me. And this verse only says four things, but I'm, I'm encouraging us this morning to kind of get out of our mindset of the, of the daily routine of life and just say, God, you're beautiful. God, you're more than I deserve. You are this to me. Now, let me just take a moment just to, just to ask you. I don't want a, a, a paragraph. I just want a sentence. Do you have something in your life right now where you say, God is this to me? Maybe he's your comfort. Maybe he's your guide. Maybe he's your light. Do we have someone that just say, God is this to me right now? Anybody? Yes, go ahead. So, I want you to say it out loud, that is. Not just right. Anybody? Yes, sir. God is faithful to me. What else? Yes. God is my strength. God is my father. Okay, we've got about what? 400 folks in here? Better get a little bit more. Here we go. Yes, and, and that's Peggy. Okay? God is my resting, resting place, right? God is merciful. He's my friend. He's ever-present. My rock. My everything. My finances. He's big. The healer of my heart and the lover of my soul. Alvin. 
light. Anybody else this morning? Yes. My peace. Redeemer. Sovereign. Forgiving. Joy. Now, I'm going to submit to you, I don't want to break off the, uh, yes, security. I don't want to break off the testimonies. Go ahead. My hope. We, we could stand here all day and probably think of 10 to 15 apiece, and it would never be able to describe who our God is. Every one of us could come up with 20 to 25 on a page, and that is not enough to describe who our God is. God is. He's everything. He is to be something. And you know what? My prayer is for our lives that we have a God that is active and not absent from our lives. And quite frankly, my burden for you as, as your friend, as your brother in Christ, is that the reality is, is that God is not present in your life. If your life was characterized by the things that you're doing, the things that you're thinking, the things that you're saying, the activities that you're taking place in, God is not present. Think of these four things with me. And let me just read these because we have a little bit of a different way of presenting this today. But today, you can look at these four divine names in Isaiah chapter 9. Let me submit to you a few things to think about. These names in this passage are names that we do not have to reveal because that's what Christ is already. He doesn't need to show me He's a wonderful counselor. Why? Because that's what He is. He doesn't need to prove to me that He is my Prince of Peace because in His inherent nature... That's what He is. You see, sometimes we think that He has to activate in our lives somewhat or some way to prove to us God doesn't have to prove to me anything. Because He is. It's wonderful. We may rightly say that someone cannot enjoy the reality of these names today until they truly know Christ. But that does not change the fact that Christ is is all-encompassing of the names that we'll study today. Second thing I'd like to say, and I've already kind of been around on this, but Christ does not need to earn these names. He doesn't need to earn them. This is what He is. Who is God in your life today? What is He representative of? What milestones can we say as Christ people that God is in our lives? Let's look at the four things and then we'll, we'll end this morning. The four things are very simple. He says, He is my wonderful counselor. If you look literally in the Hebrew, we would say it this way. He is my marvelous advisor. He's too much for me to handle. In fact, isn't it true that some of us sometimes when we go to God with our problems, we say, God, explain this to me. And I've done that before. But the reality is, is that when I go to God and I cry to him and I say, God, what is going to happen? What's going on with my life? Am I going to be here next semester? Is the money going to be there? I would submit to you already that Christ is my marvelous advisor who understands and knows my problems and he knows exactly how to answer my heart. He's my marvelous advisor, my wonderful counselor. God constantly explains to us as humans the folly of human wisdom. But I would just submit to you today, God is my wonderful counselor. If he is wonderful counselor, then my question to you is this. How often do you go for him, go to him for advice? That's what it comes down to. We, we, I seek my parents. I seek my wife. I seek other people in my life, administration, Dr. Stratton, faculty, staff. But do I go to the wonderful counselor for my life? That's who Christ is. Not only does he say he's my wonderful counselor, but it also says... Here, the mighty God. This is kind of interesting because I 
put it this way in my own life. Let me get to 2008 if I can. But that word for mighty means this. He is manly. He's my mighty God. He's like, hmm, (laughs) we must protect this house, you know. Did that several times with several folks that are a little bit older than me. It worked out well. Still uh, rang through the halls of grace. But he's manly. God is manly today. And yet at the same time in the scripture, we see that he has the care and comfort of a mother hen. And so here is how I put it. Uh, This manly type of God that we have, this manly God, is somebody who fights for his people. He's strong enough to take the battle on. He is the one that is in control enough, and he understands me enough that he is the one that wants to use his strong arm of strength in my life. You say, well, what does that mean in 2008? I believe this. God is my hero. That's what that means. God is my hero. He's not only my wonderful counselor, my marvelous advisor, but the reality of Scripture is is that God is my hero. He's manly enough and strong enough to be the one who saves me every time. And He will never let me fall. That's wonderful. That's a principle that I can live with in my life today. He's my hero. Christ is my everlasting Father. What does it mean here? It means that God, as mentioned already, is an everlasting Father. I remember in 1991, when I was a student, on on December 10th, my grandfather passed away. My dad uh, basically called and said, you know, your grandfather has, has passed away. We were uncertain of his salvation. Um, we, we didn't know what was going on, but I know this. My dad was connected to his dad, my grandfather. I'll never forget, you know, when my grandmother passed away, every Christmas when we were little kids, we would come down. And I'm not exaggerating. Our whole living room was knee-deep in presence. Then when Grandma Dupay passed away, Grandpa Dupay just gave us cash. And as teenagers, we loved that. And I'll never forget the, the, the first Christmas after Grandpa Dupay passed away, my, my dad came downstairs and tried to uphold the tradition of what my grandfather had been doing for six or seven years. So he gave all of the children envelopes. And then he went upstairs. And we knew what he was doing because we could hear him. He was weeping because his dad was gone. Some of you have experienced the loss of your dad. Some of you know what that's like. May I submit to you that we never have to say goodbye to our Heavenly Father. God. He is my Father forever. And I'll never say goodbye to him. He says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. What is God to you today? Is he your hero? Is he your marvelous advisor? Is he your everlasting father? Is he your prince of peace? This is the finale. He is a peaceful king. He is the one who brings peace to my life. And yes, he's the one who brings judgment in the, the way that he can bring judgment to people. What did Christ do for you? He brought reconciliation between you, my friend, and God Almighty. Praise the Lord for that. He is the Prince of Peace. You say, wow. This is something that I can apply to my life today because a lot of times I go to God with my problems. I want to hear my pastor on Sunday preach about how I should deal with my finances in a, in a turbulent world or how I should date or how I should live my family life or how I should take care of myself or how I should do this. If we concentrate more on the characteristics of God, a lot of these things would work themselves out. But a lot of times I find myself not characterizing or not concentrating on the character of God for my life, 
just more of what I can go to God and say, God, show me how to work these things out of Scripture. These things work out if God is my advisor, if he's my great hero, if he's my everlasting father, if he's my prince of peace, if he is that, which he is. But if I make him that, then things get better. Why? Because that's what he is. That's what he is there for. So my friends, this morning, think about this with me. What is God to you? I heard what you're about to hear in a few moments about two years ago. A great African-American preacher by the name of S.M. Lockridge preached this message and gave this example. It's about seven minutes long. He is with the Lord today. He preached this in the, in the mid-70s. And this is a wonderful example of who the Lord is. I want you to concentrate on this. Who is God to you today? Think about it. The Bible says he's a king of the Jews. He's a king of Israel. He's a king of righteousness. He's a king of the ages. He's a king of heaven. He's a king of glory. He's a king of kings. And he is a lord of lords. Now that's my king. David said the heavens declare the glory of God. And the fundament showeth his handiwork. No means of measure can define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoulder supply. No barriers can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. Well, well, he's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. That's my king. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands alone in himself. He's august. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's supreme. He's preeminent. Well, he's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in high criticism. He's a fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. And that's my king. He's the miracle of the age. He's the superlative of everything good that you choose to call him. He's the only one able to supply all of our needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He starves God and he dies. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent, and he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? Well, my king is a key of knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. He's a master of the mighty. He's a captain of the conquerors. He's the head of the heroes. He's the leader of the legislators. He's the overseer of the overcomers. He's the governor of governors. He's the prince of princes. He's the king of kings. And he's the lord of lords. That's my king. Yes. Yes. That's my king. My king. Yes. His office is manifold. His promise 
is sure. His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Well, I wish I could describe him to you, but he, he's indescribable. He's indescribable. Yes. He, he's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. I'm trying to tell you, the heavens of heaven cannot contain him, let alone a man explaining him. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off of your hands. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. And Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. Yeah! He always has been, and he always will be. I'm talking about he had no predecessor, and he'll have no successor. There was nobody before him, and there'll be nobody after him. You can't even teach him, and he's not going to resign. That's my king. Here's the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. The glory is all his. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever, and ever, and ever. And when you get through with all of the forever, then amen. Now, you can't duplicate that. But that's who God is. Amen? That's who he is. Do you know him? Did you hear it? It wasn't about whether we knew of his attributes. Even throughout what we heard, it was, do you know him? Because he's all that. And one million times more. Let's stand and pray. Father, thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for this opportunity to come into this chapel And take a few moments to remember who you are. Lord, I pray today that you would help us to incorporate these things into our lives and praise you for simply who you are. God, thank you for loving us so much. And may we say to you today in our hearts that we love you back. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless.